Previously on Esther. Esther became queen. Mordecai refused to bow down to Haman, so Haman plotted to destroy all the Jews. Esther risked her life and went before the king. She asked for the king and Haman to attend a banquet with her. Meanwhile, the king promoted Mordecai. At the banquet, Esther told the king about Haman's plot to kill the Jews. The king ordered Haman to be killed in the place that he prepared to kill Mordecai. The king gave Queen Esther Haman's house and all his belongings. Haman, the enemy of the Jews, had been killed, but the law he'd made still existed. So Esther risked her life and went before the king again. I'm sorry, Esther. The law cannot be changed. It's already been made. But you can take this to Mordecai. And you can make a new law. Right guys, translate this law into every language and take it to every corner of the empire. Quick! Go, quickly! Hey there, people of Persia! Gather around, people of Persia! Gather around, people of Persia! Gather around. Acerquense todos. Caribuni watu wa Persia. Gather around all the people of Persia. The king has made a new law. The king has made a new law. The king has made a new law. Every Jew is allowed to defend themselves against anyone who tries to attack them on this day. And they may take the belongings of those they kill. But you have find a heart of good to plunder. On the day of destruction, the Jews gathered together to defend themselves. All over the empire, the Jews killed their enemies, but they didn't take the belongings of those they'd killed. At the end of the day, Esther went to the king and asked for permission to do the same the next day. The king agreed, so the next day the Jews gathered together again and destroyed all their enemies. After two days of fighting, the Jews dedicated the next day to celebration. They gathered together to feast and worship God for saving them from destruction. Mordecai sent letters out to all the empire telling the Jews to celebrate the victory. The Jews made it a national holiday to remember how God saved them. The king made Mordecai second in command and Mordecai was respected throughout the empire because he continued to live according to God's ways. You're probably wondering, how do I know so much about the story of Esther and Mordecai? Well, that's because I am Mordecai. So in today's episode, we saw judgment, salvation and celebration. These are common themes that we've been seeing all throughout the book. So we saw that those who go against God and his plans are judged. They get destroyed. We saw Haman, he got destroyed. And then we saw the Jews' enemies, they got destroyed. But then we also saw salvation. Those who submit to God and his plans are saved. Queen Esther, she became queen and then the king spared her life. And then Mordecai, he was promoted and his life was spared as well. And then we see today, the Jews, they are saved from destruction. And we see a lot of celebration in the book of Esther. There's a lot of parties and feasts. But I want you to notice that in the end, the ones who are celebrating are the Jews. Because God didn't just save their lives, but he also destroyed their enemies. So that was a quick summary of what we've seen so far in the story. But today we're going to focus on celebration. Now last week we looked at judgment and salvation. So if you haven't watched those, go check it out. I'm sure we're all familiar with celebration. It might be your birthday or winning a board game. We love to celebrate, don't we? Can you imagine some of the emotions the Jews were experiencing as they celebrated? One moment they were going to die. They were going to be wiped out. But then God intervened just in time and saved them. So I'm guessing they dropped everything they were doing and gathered around in groups. 
they had a big feast with the best food. Maybe they sat around the fire telling stories. It would have been a day filled with joy and happiness and laughter and relief and even some tears of thankfulness towards God. At Christmas we celebrate God rescuing us through Jesus. It's similar in Persia. The Jews celebrate what God has done. God saved them from destruction. And to remember this, they dedicate one day every year to celebrate. Now it's just like Christmas, isn't it? At Christmas we celebrate Jesus, the Son of God, entering the world. We celebrate because of what Jesus will go on to do on the cross. He loves the world so much that he's willing to sacrifice himself so that those who believe in him won't die but have eternal life. So God rescued the Jews back then in Persia, but God has also rescued you and me today. Which makes me ask the question, do I celebrate what God has done for me in the same way that the Jews celebrated what God had done for them? Am I really filled with joy and happiness when I think of Jesus and what he did on the cross? I admit that I don't always. As I was growing up, I went to church every Sunday and I would hear about Jesus dying on the cross for me every week. But it didn't really mean much to me. I didn't understand what God had done for me. But then one day, I understood. I understood that I deserved to die on that cross. I understood that I had sinned against God, that I reject his ways, I reject him as the boss of my life and I reject worshipping him. But God loved me so much that he sent a substitute. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross instead of me. Now that's amazing news and I should be celebrating this amazing news. Now celebrating God's salvation is only for Christians. In the story of Esther, the Jews, who are God's people, his friends, are the ones who celebrated. So are you a Christian? Are you God's friend? Well, if you're not, you won't be included in the celebration. But if you do want to be part of the celebration, you'll need to ask for forgiveness of your sins. But if you are a Christian, then are you celebrating this salvation that we have? Are you celebrating what God has done for us through Jesus. Well, the best way to celebrate is to make a commitment to love God with all your heart and to live for him. And then the next step for you will be to share this good news of what Jesus has done with your friends and families and the people around you so that they can also join in with the celebration. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us through Jesus for the cross. Please help us to fully understand what you have done for us and to join in with the celebration, to celebrate with you the victory that you have achieved through Jesus. Help us not to be scared of sharing this good news with the people around us, but give us opportunities, even in this hard time, and help us to keep trusting you. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Whew. Like, like and subscribe! subscribe.